Joe Theismann leads the Washington Redskins into Tampa today, coming off what he says and many agree is the finest performance of his career against the Eagles last week. Theismann and his favorite target, Art Monk, are both number one in their NFL statistical categories after one week of play. Still, it took an overtime field goal from the veteran Mark Mosley, who almost lost his job in preseason, to record a 37-34 victory over the Eagles. The fates were less kind to Tampa Bay Buccaneer quarterback Doug Williams and his teammates last Sunday in Minnesota. Williams, who has matured in his fifth year in the NFL, teamed up with tight end Jimmy Giles for the score. But despite a 21 for 38 day by the Buck quarterback, critical mistakes, including a controversial running into the punter call, and three interceptions by the Vikings' aggressive, opportunistic defense spelled the difference as the Buccaneers dropped their opener 17 to 10 in the Metrodome much to the chagrin of head coach John McKay. CBS Sports presents the National Football League. Today, the Washington Redskins against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Welcome to Tampa Stadium for this afternoon's NFC battle between the Redskins and the Buccaneers. It is warm, it is humid, and there is a good possibility of rain. Hi everybody, I'm Frank Lieber, and this jersey was worn with great distinction for 13 seasons by the gentleman on my right. And Joe Green today becomes a member of the CBS crew of analysts. And Joe, the kid said, since you're retiring, he now wants Leroy Selmans and to give it back to you. <laughs> There's a lot of memories in this jersey. How does it feel being a rookie? Oh, I tell you, it's, it's tough, but I'm enjoying it. All right. Let's talk a little football. Tampa Bay, first of all. I know they're concerned about their offensive line. Coach McKay was very concerned with the offensive line, Frank. Uh, they did not produce the way he wanted them to, and they do have two injuries in that offensive line. Two, two guys that started last week that will not be starting this week. Okay, Redskins scored a lot of points, had a lot of points scored on him, and I know Joe Gibbs has got to be upset about his secondary. Well, he is. Uh, he was very pleased with the offensive production. And the defensive secondary did pose a bit, bit of problems, but they got a great performance out of those big guys up front, that defensive line. All right. Redskins have won the toss, Tampa Bay kicking off, and it has just started to shower. In the last minute or two, a pretty heavy shower coming down at the present time. Mike Nelms feels the opening kickoff at the five, takes it back to near the 15-yard line, and he has bounced rather severely at that point. By Davis. Great coverage, Frank, inside the 20. Here's the Redskins and the way they line up. Charlie Brown is a newcomer. Great start last week against the Philadelphia Eagles with two touchdowns. They have a two tight end offense with Warren and Williams in there and just one running back. And the Redskins offensive line, youngsters with the exception of George Stark. Joe Theismann brings him up to the line of scrimmage. They spot it at the 14-yard line. Monk in motion, Riggins the lone running back, and Riggins takes it to the 16, maybe the 17 yard line. Pick up a two, perhaps three yards in the play. It'll be second down and eight for the Redskins. Tampa Bay plays the three man front, and of course, the anchor is the great Leroy Silman, Pro Bowl star of the last couple of years. There's the four linebackers. Hugh Green has certainly come on strong, had a great rookie season. And the defensive backs. It's an all-important secondary. Each of those youngsters started with a different club in the NFL. Second and seven. Again, Riggins getting the call. Got a yard, and that's it. And it's third down six. Near capacity crowd of close to 80,000 on hand here, despite the inclement weather. Neil Colsey makes the stop. But this is the type of shower you get in the... Florida area, in this part of Florida anyway, it'll rain as hard as it can for 10 or 15 minutes and then all of a sudden stop and the sun will come out again. But it's really coming down now, Joe. Oh, it certainly is. And this has to favor the team that established that, that running game. And it looks, looks like it can be uh, the Redskins. Third down and six. Redskins ball, 18-yard line. Their own end of the field. Theismann throwing that wet ball. Incomplete. Intended for Clarence Harmon, number 38. And the Redskins will have to punt. They have a newcomer in that department who is Jeff Hayes, a rookie from North Carolina. Did a great job for the Tar Heels last year, and he beat out Mike Connell for the kicking job this year. Rain continues to pelt down. 
Temperature in the 80s, so it's a very warm shower. Hayes did not do well in his opening game last week against the Philadelphia Eagles. Holt is a single, single safety back. John Holt standing back at his own 40-yard line. Redskins taking a lot of time here. They don't get it off pretty soon. They may get a whistle for delay of game. Holt chasing this one to the far sideline. Bounces at the Washington 45 and is down at the Redskin 47. So Tampa Bay will go to the offense for the first time this afternoon with excellent field position. That was not the kick that the, the Redskins were hoping for. 29 yards, all it got them. Here's the Tampa Bay. Offensive backs and the receivers. Doug Williams at the throttle. The Tampa Bay offensive line with George Yarno starting today in place of uh, Sean Farrell, who may see some action. And Ray Snell was the other young man that Joe alluded to earlier. He's out for four weeks with a knee injury, suffered last week against the Vikings. First and ten bucks at the Redskin 47, and Williams comes out throw it. Little flip pass, Wilder. The fullback, James Wilder, is down to the 36. We got a fumble, a loose football. And let's see who got it. The Redskins have recovered at the 36-yard line. Dexter Manley. Well, the weather has already uh, became a fact, become a factor in this ball game. They get the Redskins in a man-to-man. -man. And Doug just tosses the ball outside to, uh, to number 32, Wilder. Does a good job of running. Redskins, Redskins make a good hit. And they take over first and 10 at their own 37-yard line. No score, a minute and a half deep into the game. Frank Lieber with Joe Green at very wet Tampa Stadium. Redskins, having recovered the fumble, take over first and 10 at their own 36-yard line. Washington going with that double tight end offense, which has suited them so well since midseason of last year. Riggins on the carry gets a yard as he's pinned by Scott Brantley, number 52. Joe, I'm sure you've played in this type of weather many times before. What's it like? Well, it's very difficult down in the trenches. And uh, over the past, we found that the, the team that establishes the running game that has a good, the good big back generally... Uh, uh, Ferris bet in a situation like this, Frank. More fun playing in a warm rain, though, than in a cold rain, I'm sure. Huh? <laughs> I would imagine. Pick up of the yard, second down nine. Washington at its 37-yard line. Mike Williams, the tight end in motion. Short pass is completed to Don Warren at the 44-yard line. Couple of yards shy of the first down, and Cecil Johnson, number 56, closes on the tackle. Well, we can expect a lot of play from from uh, Tampa Bay's uh, linebackers. They, they make short drops, let, the, t let the, uh, the offense catch the ball in front of them and come up and make the big hit. Redskins have the number one offense in the league after the first week of play after their great showing against Philadelphia. In fact, last week, Theismann had 13 receptions from his wideouts. Monk had a great day. Go to Charlie Brown. Riggins trying to pick up the first, and it'll be close. David Logan. The nose tackle, number 76, leading the defensive charge for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the Bucs don't believe he made it. Let's see where the officials spot it. Leroy Seven closes the hole here real well and allows number, number 76, Logan, to run around the block and make the play on, on John Riggins, number 44. Leroy closed the hole real well. Strong close. They did not pick up the first down. It'll be fourth down, less than a yard needed for the first. Hayes comes in to do the punting. And once again, John Holt is deep for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The rain has lightened up just a wee bit. Not quite as heavy as it was a moment ago. Almost bobbled that snap, but he got the kick away, and it's a good kick. Holt watching this one sail out of bounds inside the 10. They'll spot it at the 8-yard line. So under pressure, a good kick from the rookie Jeff Hayes. No score with 11 minutes, 6 seconds left to play in the opening period here in wet Tampa. 46 yards on the punt by the rookie Jeff Hayes, and the Buccaneers are back to their 8-yard line. First and 10, and they sent Kevin House wide to the left side, where he's matched up with rookie Vernon Dean, making his first start in the National Football League. Simple power over the right side that time as the 
Tampa Bay Buccaneers playing it close to the best. Monty Coleman making the stop. And the Buccaneers, James Wilder, second year man from Missouri, who was a very pleasant surprise last season. Pick up a four. It'll be second down six with the ball at the 11-yard line. Vernon Dean, who is starting this game at right cornerback for the Washington Redskins, number 32, is the first defensive back to start for the Redskins since 1964 when Paul Krause was a rookie. He intercepted 12 passes that year. Doug Williams going with the short toss, and the Buccaneers have their first first down of the ball game. One thing about Wilder, as John McKay told us yesterday, he catches the ball very well. John Wilder does a good job of coming out of the backfield catching the football. This is something that Doug told us yesterday that he wanted to do to try to slow down the rush, to get the ball to the backs coming out of the backfield. First down for the Buccaneers. We, we talked to uh, several of the players yesterday, including Williams. I love Doug's line when he met you, Joe. He said, it is nice to meet you under these circumstances. <laughs> he was being kind, Frank. Of course, he wasn't even on the Buccaneers. I don't think the last time the, uh, the Buccaneers and the Steelers got together. First down from the 22-yard line. Rich Malat coming up to make the stop. Wilder is the workhorse here in the early going, but this time the carry is by James Owens, former UCLA star who the 49ers had, trying to make him a wide receiver, running back, defensive back, kick returner, finally gave up on him, traded him for Johnny Davis last year. He's become an integral part of this Tampa Bay offense. No gain on the play, second and 10 from the 22. Well, they've got better field position here, Frank, and it, this is allows them to uh, go to some more things in their offense, give them more options. Buccaneers shuttle their plays in using wide receivers. That time, Wilder from the one setback offense picks up six strong yards to the 27 before he is shoved back by the Redskins' Rich Malotz. Last year at this time, Redskins and most of their linebackers hurt. Well, there were some questions whether the Tampa Bay offensive line was doing a good job blocking. They took the challenge, and right there, they opened up the hole for James Wilder to go in for a good game. Official spotted at the 27. It'll be third down five for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers from their own 27-yard line. We're just about midway in the first period. Here at Tampa Stadium, no score. I, I think that... The Tampa Bay offensive line is going to rise to the occasion. You know, they have two guys in there that had been started prior to being beat out this spring camp. Theo Bell wide to the right side. Jones to the left. The short pass is incomplete. No fumble. Just an incompleted forward pass and a good hit by Vernon Dean, number 32. And Dean was shaken up on the play. Now, that's the position that the Redskins have lost Joe Lavender, at least for the time being. He's out with an injury. And Dean uh, was described to us yesterday as being a tough hitter. And he came up and made a good stick. This is something that the, the wide receivers hate for, to be looking back for the ball, and there is a, that big tackle from, the, from one of those little guys. Vernon Dean really stuck it. Time out here with 8 minutes and 13 seconds left to play in the opening period. No score. A lot of your friends wishing you well, Joe Green, on your debut as a broadcaster. And one of those will be with us in just a moment. Vernon Dean, the rookie, left the field under his own power. Looked like an upper body injury, maybe a hand or an arm. And Mike Nelms now comes in anticipating the punt from the toe of Larry Swider as the Buccaneers have a fourth down and five upcoming. Nelms, the NFC Pro Bowl returner last year. And anytime you're double figures on punt returns, which he is uh, as of last week, you're doing some kind of job. He's one of the best. Thud is his foot at the ball. Here's Nelms from the 35. Looking for an opening to the 40. And is pinned at the 39-yard guy. This uh, gentleman I was talking about, Joe Green, looked vaguely familiar, but he wanted to wish you well on your debut as a broadcaster, and here he is. As a player and a guy that was with you for all these years <laughs> as a Pittsburgh Steeler, I'd just like to say that uh, do a great job. Try to do all the things that I taught you were cool, you know, like don't stutter, don't take your teeth out, uh, you know, don't mess up, be relaxed, don't intimidate anybody, 
Don't keep asking for Coca-Cola. Just because you're sitting up there now doesn't mean you're big will. They can cut you just like we cut you here. You understand me? And if you mess up and I see you, I'm going to have to slap you. <laughs> keep that in mind. Don't you forget what he said. Oh, that cherry. <laughs> I have something for him. You have something for him? Yeah, I will have something. I'm sure you will. First play from scrimmage. Redskins got the football. A little swing pass out to Art Monk. Good for just a couple of yards. Well, it's good more, <laughs> more than that. Five or six yards. Be a second down four upcoming for the Redskins at their 46-yard line. But we did want to get Terry's words in. Uh, wishing you well, I think, in your broadcasting career. He is some character. Theisman, back to throw it. Completes the pass at the 50-yard line. And John Riggins not only can run with the football, but he catches it well. Scott Bradley making the stop. That should be just about enough for the Redskins first down. Just into Tampa Bay's end of the field at the 49-yard line. Riggins has developed into a key man into this offense. He hasn't uh, missed a step after missing a year in the league. He comes out and gets underneath the coverage, makes a strong catch, and makes the first down. The Redskins are getting in scoring territory now, so and they can open up their, their offense. One thing Dan Henning, the Redskins' offensive coordinator, told us yesterday, likes about Riggins, is he does not fumble. He's gone better than 200 carries without a fumble. Theismann with good protection. Nails it over the middle, and the pass is complete to Charlie Brown at the 29-yard line, and the Redskins have another first down. You know as a defensive lineman, you give anybody that much time, and you got problems. It's, it's extremely difficult. You'll see Charlie John, Charlie uh, Brown get into the scene. He gets a lot of time, and you're going to see Mike Thomas come up and make a strong hit on him, but it's just a little too late. When you play this zone, the thing is, is let them catch the football in front of you, but come up and make a good, strong hit. So the Redskins have the drive going now at the 29-yard line of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. First down, Washington. Riggins got a couple of blockers out in front and is out of bounds at the 24-yard line. You could see the interference there. Jacoby and Grimm both out in front of him, 66 and 68, respectively. This is one of three late starting games in the NFL, so most of the earlier games are now final. The Cowboys, even their season record at 1-1 one one by beating the Cardinals 24-7. That's a bit of a surprise. Chicago really needs some offense. Mike Ditka used all three of his quarterbacks today. Philadelphia came from behind to beat Cleveland. And how about those Steelers? Huh? How about them? New York Jets over New England, 31 to 7. Steelers pull it out in overtime, and Joe Green is a happy man. No score so far here in Tampa. Neil Cozy of the Buccaneers secondary was shaken up on that last play, the reason for the timeout, but he appears to be okay. He's out of the ball game right now. Redskins, second and five from the 25-yard line of the Buccaneers, and Riggins rolls down to the 17-yard line. Oh, that's what makes him so difficult to bring down. He just follows his blocking really well, extremely well, and that power in his legs, he just carries tacklers with him. As he settled down a little bit, uh, Joe, he used to be quite a character. Remember the year he almost shaved his head and left the head of a mohawk? <laughs> yes, he did. He's, he's following his blocking real well here. You see Bostic, uh, number 53, making a good block. There's Jacoby leading through. There's a lot of people coming through making some blocks for John Riggins. First and 10, Redskins at the 17-yard line. Warren, the tight end, is in motion. Riggins on the carry. Inside the 15 to the 14, and then Dave Stalls leads the charge, number 65. Riggins right now is the eighth leading rusher of all time and uh, is moving up very rapidly on Larry Zonka, who is just ahead of him. That's what he did last year. And, of course, the year before that, he sat out in a contract dispute, and John will sit this next play out in the second down seven. Rain continues to pelt down here on the orange-clad fans. Not only do they have orange shirts, but they have orange slickers to go over the shirts. Second and seven. Theismann on the delay. Pick up a five yards on the play is Clarence Harmon, who came into the ball game and replaced Riggins. Takes it down to the nine-yard line. Take a look at the weights on the Redskins' offensive line. They average 273 pounds, and I think Jeff Bostic must have missed a few meals in there, Joe. <laughs> Pick on the little guys. Pick on the little guys. Those are all youngsters except George Stark, who's been around for nine years, and he's done a great job in a, in a veteran helping mold together an offensive line, which has come together a lot faster than even the Redskins had hoped. Ball is at the eighth, third down one. 
Riggins back in the game. Has the first down. It's a five. That's the value of having a big man in, the, in, in your lineup like Riggins and like Harmon that can get going there when the situation gets tough and get those hard, tough yards. Riggins played his first five years in the league for the New York Jets, was a 1,000-yard rusher, eventually uh, played out his option, became a free agent, and was signed uh, when George Allen was still the head coach of the Washington Redskins. Five Redskin drive, which started back in the 40 and now has reached the Tampa Bay Five. I've played against John a couple of times. Real strong runner. You know, when you make contact with him, he always seems to push you forward a couple of yards. Riggins again, the sole setback. Warren in motion across the backfield, and this time Riggins is tripped up behind the line of scrimmage by Mark Cockney, number 33. Cockney was a starter until last year. He was injured, then Colsey came in and beat him out, and now Cockney's trying to fight his way back to starting. Cotton is the guy that just came in and uh, made a substitution for Neil Cozy, number 21, and made a tremendous hit on a big back. Three-yard loss. Cockney is one of two of the original Tampa Bay Buccaneers left. He, in fact, he was the only one this week, and then they signed Dave Ravis. And uh, he is back on the roster. So that sets up a second down. Goal to go from the eight-yard line. Art Monk wide to the right. Now Monk starts in motion. Theismann on the rollout pass. Touchdown, Charlie Brown. The rookie scores his third touchdown in two weeks. He's a second-year man, but he was injured in preseason last year and didn't see any regular season action, beating Morris Thomas on that play. This is one of the plays that Coach McKay was worried about. Jo Joe Theismann's ability to scramble. You see that cut right there? This allows Joe to get out and find number 87, Charlie Brown, in the flats here for the touchdown. Charlie Brown making, making a big catch, giving the Redskins some more offensive weapons. Good pass protection there. You may have noticed by Clarence Harmon, number 38. Mosley on to try the extra point. Theismann puts the wet ball down. The kick is no good. So Mosley, who was perfect last week, both in the field goal and in the extra point department against the Philadelphia Eagles, muffs the extra point try in the inclement weather. And the Redskins lead it 6-0 with three minutes, five seconds left in the opening period. Redskins ready to kick off, and again the rain comes down a little bit harder. Well, just on cue, it started raining at the opening kickoff. It was a beautiful day down here, though uh, warm and humid until then. And just about kickoff time, the skies came down on top of Tampa Stadium. And that is a rumble of thunder that you hear in the background and a flash of lightning, uh, lightning in the distance. You know, Johnny Ray uh, Smith, number 22, back there, he's 5'9". He said the last thing he wanted, he had to worry about was a guy being shorter than him. <laughs> number one is 5'8". That's Martin. <laughs> a rookie back to the 20 and across to the 27-yard line. You may have noticed that the Redskins punter, Hayes, does the kicking off as well. Take another look at the touchdown play to Charlie Brown. Theismann almost slipped here, almost stumbled. Heisman gets out of containment here and just buys a little, little bit more time to get the ball to number 87, Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown goes into the end zone and does his act there. John McKay even diagrammed that type of play for us yesterday. He, he, said, he went to the board. He said, this is the thing we're worried about. So it's not like the San Diego offense where Fouts just sits back there because Feisman can maneuver. You can see now the rain is beginning to have an effect on the condition of the grass here. This is not artificial turf. James Owens on the carry, run out of bounds by Monty Coleman. So it's, it's critical, Frank, that for the team to get on the board first because the field does become a factor after a while. It's McKay in the white hat and Billy Nelson, who calls the plays along with John McKay, with the headset. Nelson is talking to Boyd Dowler upstairs, the former Green Bay Packer wide receiver, who's one of the men in the press box. Second and 12. Tampa Bay Buccaneers from their 26. Williams fumbles the snap. Can't find it. It is picked up by Wilder, who drives forward to the 29 and makes a three-yard gain out of it. Well, they dodged the silver bullet on, bullet on that one. He just fumbles the snap here. I'm sure the ball was wet. Wilder alertly picked up the ball and trying to get some yards. You see him losing his footing there? Pickup of two. Call it third down eight. I think you owe me a debt of gratitude, Mr. Green. We had a choice of working indoors or outdoors today, and I said, let's go indoors. It's your responsibility to take care of the roof. <laughs> it is very wet where we were supposed to be. Again, trouble handling the wet football, and this time the Redskins come up with the loose ball. 
Number 69, Barry Brooks gets the fumble, and the Redskins are in good shape. This is supposed to be, in football, the surest handoff right here. The exchange between the center and the quarterback. There you see a problem, and the weather, I think you can attribute the weather to that. Well, the Buccaneers have had the tendency to self-destruct, which they showed last week with four turnovers and, of course, three interceptions by Doug Williams. And the mistakes are hurting them again today. First and ten at the 29-yard line. Monk in motion. Theismann drops straight back, and he's got a receiver wide open at the 25-yard line, and Riggins takes it to the 19. And they almost throw Riggins up into the stands. Andy Hawkins spun him around and just tossed him like a rag doll. And he bounced off the side of the bleachers. No restraining wall over there. Well, Riggins has been a very big part of this offense. There he does a little check through. Let's the linebackers clear out. Then he goes to the open spot, and he almost out, outruns the linebacker here. Watch him spin him around here, and... Riggins just slides a good 10 yards into that restraining wall. He's all right, however. That was a lot of fun, Frank. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Second down. They did not pick up the first down, but they're within inches. Second and less than one for the first down. Nose of the football just inside the Tampa Bay 20. Riggins to pick up the first. Really hanging on to that football and crashes through to the 16-yard line. Well, you're back to your old business. You're watching game films again, I understand. You have to... Huh? Oh, my goodness. Look at that water. Look at the water cascading down the stairs. I mean, it came down in buckets and is still raining very hard. So how much of a test of football this is going to turn into remains to be seen. These are days you like to have the artificial turf. This is a strong argument for the, for the synthetic turf. This field, however, is in excellent shape, as good a field as you could find. The grass variety. First and ten. Redskins from the 16. Give it to Riggins again. Riggins around the right side. Hit at the 11. And knocked out of bounds by Mark Cotney, number 33. Cotney did a super job of coming up, stopping John Riggins. He was trying to get out of, outside, trying to get some additional yardage. You see all these blockers around in front. They're losing their footings. Everybody's trying, is falling down. Cotney comes up and make a good, strong hit on a big on a big running back like John Riggins. Riggins with 31 yards rushing and 11 carries. We've had some technical problems along the line. For those of you who may have missed a portion of this game, the Redskins scoring first on a touchdown toss from Joe Theismann to Charlie Brown and are driving again with a second down and five from the Tampa Bay 11-yard line. Riggins has been the workhorse and continues to be so. This time they stop him after a gain of just about a yard. Leroy Selman, number 63, coming in there. Leroy gets a lot of the double-team treatment that uh, you've seen so much of down through the years. And for a defensive lineman, that can be awfully frustrating. Oh, extremely frustrating. At that point in time, he made a very strong play. He, he defeated the double-team and stacked up the play, and Riggins had no place to go. How do you fire yourself up knowing you, you just can't get to the quarterback because they've got too many people on you? Well, you, you just have to resolve yourself to the fact that you're helping your teammates. If, if there are two people on you, then they're there should be someone else that's drawing less attention. Third down, five. Redskins from the Tampa Bay 10. Theismann looking for Monk. Now he's in trouble and is dropped back at the 19-yard line. Scott Brantley, number 52. The linebacker broke through there to make the stop. Number three pick a couple of years ago. I don't think Scott was coming on a blitz here on a dog. He, he had coverage with the, with the back over on the right side. You'll see number 52 out of the right, left of your screen come in and make a hit on Joe Theismann, the quarterback. Leroy Selman with a good job on that play as well for the Buccaneers. Field goal time. And Mosley, who missed an extra point earlier, will attempt a 35-yard field goal with Theismann to hold. Mosley was perfect last week against the Philadelphia Eagles, including the game winner. This one is long enough, and it is good. So Mosley nails it from 35 yards away with only nine seconds remaining on the clock in the first period of play here at Rain Drench Tampa Stadium. And the Redskins lead the Buccaneers by a score of 9 to nothing. And despite the inclement weather, you have to be very impressed 
by the Washington offense. They move the football against a very good defense as the rain continues to pelt down. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience and any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Tampa Bucks. And the National Football League is prohibited. You know, I was serious about that comment about game films because you're almost like a player again when you're getting ready for a telecast. I noticed you spent a good portion of the weekend looking at films and tapes. I most certainly did. I uh, I watched more film in, in, in two days than I would normally watch in a week when I was a player. At least you're dry up here, Joe. <laughs> That's one consolation. But I, I enjoy your company, Frank. Well, thank you, sir. Michael Morton is back deep along with Johnny Ray Smith for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Morton has been a real surprise. He wears number one. Normally, that is an illegal number. But if you're a kick returner, it's okay. If they made him a defensive back or a running back, they'd have to give him a number in the 20s or the 40s. Hayes lines the kick to Morton at the 5, 15, 20, 25. And Morton is stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And the Bucks will put it in play from there. Jeff Hayes, the rookie punter, who also serves as the kickoff man for the Washington Redskins. Well, I think the key point now for the Bucks to be aware of is that although they're down 10 points, uh, they are not out of this ball game. And just to stay with that game plan and try to get on the board, anything they get on the board will put them in a good position in this ball game. Well, they got to hang on to the football. Last time, of course, they had fumbled on two exchanges and lost it on the second one, which resulted in the field goal by the Redskins. First down from the 30, Williams. Hands off to Owens. Now, he's a flyer. Good move. James Owens. A world-class sprinter. In fact, he was on the Olympic team back in uh, 76. Pick it up enough for the first down as the first period comes to an end. Washington leading. Nass earlier due to our technical problems. Here it is again, Joe. Eight yards. This is a short sprint out by uh, Joe Theismann. And this is a play that McKay was very worried about. He gets the ball to number 87. Charlie Brown and goes into the end zone. That's a great name for a receiver, isn't it? <laughs> Charlie Brown. Second down. Buccaneers at their 38-yard line. They need a yard for the first down. Williams throws a ball, and he's got a man wide open. That is Kevin House, and House will go all the way for a touchdown. Kevin House is the big play specialist of the Tampa Bay Bucs. How did he get so wide open? Well, you know, he was all, he's the big play man here, and Doug is finding time. He's waiting. And this is a problem when you're in a man-to-man -man defense. Tony Peters went for the interception and missed it, and no one is going to catch Kevin House. 62 yards for Kevin House. Last year, House had seven catches longer than 50 yards, three over 70 yards. And that one was good for 62, and he got behind everybody. And then it was simply a foot race. So the Buccaneers strike quickly, and Capice uh, step back is fumbled by Swider. Capice trying to run for the extra point, and I don't think that's a very good idea for a little place kicker. <laughs> I don't think so either, Frank. But what else was he going to do? I think I'd have taken it and thrown it and hoped that somebody, somebody caught it. <laughs> Timeout, Redskins 9. Buccaneers 6, and we'll be back at Tampa Stadium in just a Bill Capice ready to kick off for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Who have just scored on the long strike to Kevin House. The kickoff is very short. And picked up by one of the up men, Williams, a defensive back for the Washington Redskins. And the Redskins will wind up with the ball at their 41-yard. What in the world happened there? It did not appear to be an onside kick. It I don't know. I think he slipped as he was coming up to kick the, kick the football. Maybe he whiffed it or almost whiffed it. Let's see. He did. He just slipped slightly. Just as he was getting ready to, to hit the ball, his, his, his left foot, that planted foot, slipped. First down, Redskins ball at their 42-yard line. Feel very wet right now. Theismann. Art Monk with the leaping catch at the 50. Close to the first down is Norris Thomas. Number 41 makes the stop. Monk, the leading receiver in the National Football League after one week of play. He had eight catches for 143 yards against the Philadelphia Eagles. And he was the 
first draft choice of the Redskins in 1980. The first first they had in 12 years. Going back to 1968. He's been a good one. He's their big play man. He's to this team what uh, Kevin House certainly is to the Buccaneers. Second down one for the first down. Nose of the ball just in Tampa Bay's end of the field. Fake to Riggins and Heisman slides for the first down depending on where they spot it. He missed the handoff. David Logan coming up to secure the tackle. I think where they put it down, he's going to be short of the first. Which means it'll be third down. They still got a yard. Next Saturday on CBS Sports, Nebraska and Penn State, both impressive victors yesterday. How about that Todd Blackledge, that uh, Penn State quarterback? 12 touchdown passes in three games. He's my pick. And Nebraska, of course, set an NCAA total offense record yesterday, beating New Mexico State. Riggins on third and one. The second surge got him the first down at the 46-yard line of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Mike Washington coming up from the secondary. Number 40 to make the stop. Every time I say it's lit up a little bit, it starts going, coming down buckets again. <laughs> they don't look too happy over there, do they? Ah, they don't look like much fun on the Redskin bench on either bench right now. Normally, you got a lot of sun problems down here this time of year. And they play their early season games, 4 o'clock local time kickoff, to avoid some of the heat. But this time of day is when you get the showers. First and ten. Redskins from the 46. Theisman rolling out to his right. Pass is tipped in the air and almost intercepted. That was a fine defensive play on the part of the Bucks. Andy Hawkins, number 59, got his hands on the football and almost had an interception. Leroy Selman put pressure from the backside. You'll see it. There he is. He's being held, but he's still coming. Today, almost intercepted. See, Sam almost intercepted the ball. He didn't see it. He saw it a little bit late. Yeah, I looked that jersey over after we did our little opening, and that thing has got more tears and places sewn up. Is that all due to offensive linemen? You can believe that. Once they get a hold, they don't want to let go. They take the jersey with them if necessary. Second and ten. Harmon. Looks like a skating rink out there. Field is holding up as well as could be expected, although there's a lot of water on the field right now. You know, in conditions like this, down in the pits, it generally favor the offensive lineman because they are coming off low and they're getting that good surge, and it's very hard to, to, to maintain your footing as a defensive lineman. John McKay, in his seventh year, is the only coach the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have ever had. Where have you heard that line before? Monk goes wide to the right side. We're looking at a third down and eight for the Washington Redskins from the Tampa Bay 44. Mike Williams, number 88 in motion. Theismann on that roll again, which he is so effective. This time, no one was open. He got it back to the line of scrimmage and then had to take his lumps. Frank, they had it scattered to perfection. They got burned on the touchdown for this. But Joe Theismann dropped back, then he went around and tried to get that little roll, and what they were worried about was him getting outside. And you see the defensive end, they just flattened out a little bit to prevent him from getting outside throwing the football. Fourth and ten, and Jeff Hayes in to do the punting, and that 37-yard average is very good considering the elements. John Holt drops back deep along with Theo Bell for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's hold at the top of your screen. Bell, the former Pittsburgh Steeler, and a teammate of Joe's at the bottom. Theo doesn't like the fair catch. He said you can't make any money fair catching it. Good point. Some confusion here. Let's see if this well, delay of game. They took too much time to get the punt away. And the Redskins will be penalized five yards. And Clarence Harmon, number 38, really hot. <laughs> I think that's the first penalty we've had, isn't it? You remember one earlier? It is. The punter might not have liked the position of the field that he was on, and five yards is not going to hurt him at this point. That sound you hear in the background is not a bowling alley. That is thunder, and it is close. Here's the officiating crew. Gordon McCarter is the referee in this contest. And they're having as tough a time as... Everybody else, some of these fans are saying, we got to recruit and who's going to the stands. 
at lightning and thunder maybe get a little bit too close. Maybe we'll sit out the rest of the second quarter right now. Fourth and 15. Nine to six. The Redskins lead it with 11 minutes, 52 seconds left to play in the first half. Hayes to do the punting. Again, a pretty decent kick. Bell watches this one sail over his head, and it just does trickle on into the end zone. It rolled dead one yard deep in the end zone, and Hayes a little unhappy because he thought possibly somebody could get down there and down that thing on the one-yard line. 50 yards on the punt. That's an excellent punt. Let's see if we got a flag or what the situation is. A lot of, yes, we do have a flag. Yeah, I could see Theo Bell on his knees praying that that ball would go into the end zone after he, he decides to let it go. Penalty's going to be against uh, the Buccaneers. Look, well, let's see. Maybe the Redskins, the receiving team of the kick. I imagine Theo would have a tough time tomorrow explaining that in the film session if it rolled dead on the one, right? <laughs> yeah, the ball hit there in that, in that wet spot and almost just, it, seemed, it appeared that it would just die there. Here's the call by Gordon McCarter, the referee. After he talks it over with the officials. Penalty was against the Redskins. I'm sorry, the penalty is for illegal use of the hands by the kicking team, not the receivers. That's what we said, the Redskins, illegal use of the hands. It's a little unusual in a punting situation. They'll normally call that penalty against the receiving team when somebody tries to hold somebody coming down. Now there's a big discussion as to when the penalty occurred. And if it occurred before the ball changed hands, they're going to make the Redskins kick it over. And that's, I think, what's going to happen. I don't think the Bucks would be too happy with that. Now, Joe Gibbs wants a clarification from Gordon McCarter, the referee. Well, the Bucks would love to get the ball at, at least at the 20-yard line. If he gets another opportunity to punt the ball, then they might get it inside the 20-yard line. So I think the Bucks would just rather have the football right now 20. Now McCarter's going to step off the penalty yardage and this of course uh, may be a little bit of a calculated risk on the part of the Buccaneers hoping they can get it back further than the 20 on the touchback. Building a use of the hands number 39 kicking team during the kick accepted. Repeat fourth down. Otis Wansley, the Redskin reserve running back, and that will wipe out a 50-yard punt by Hayes, and he'll have to do it again from five yards further back. The sloppy portion of the field that the punter is standing in. It's a good point. Watch the punter very closely. See if he slips here. Good snap. Not nearly as good a kick, however. Theo Bell at the 30, up to the 36-yard line. And the Buccaneers, instead of having first down at the 20, will have the first down at their 37. So they gain 17 yards in field position as a result of accepting that penalty. 9-6, to six, Redskins lead it. And with the headset, didn't that used to be Joe Gibbs? <laughs> I mean, it's like a ground rat right now. Buccaneers ball, first and ten at their 37-yard line. They trail 9-6. They've struck once with the big play. Here's Williams on the rollout, wanting to go long to Kevin House again, but had to tuck it under his arm and moved it up to the 44. Pick up of seven. Second period. Detroit leads the Rams. 3-0. There'll be a revolution in Los Angeles. The Rams don't get it on track. And the 49ers, injuries and all, leading Denver in the second period. Tony Peters came up on that last uh, hit on, on, on the quarterback. Doug uh, had an opportunity to go out of bounds. I wonder why he didn't go out of bounds then. Second down, three. Officials have it marked at the Tampa Bay 44-yard line. One running back. They have a two tight end offense in there right now. Wilder is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Buccaneers have been running Jerry Bell, a rookie, and a third-round draft choice at one end. And, of course, Jimmy Childs at the other end. There's no gate on that play, so you're looking at third down now, and two needed for the first down is Matt Mendenhall. Number 76 made the stop. 
Now, Coach McKay said that he, he was pleased with, with the progress of the Bucks running game going into last, uh, least, last week's ball game. And uh, he was disappointed with that one. Now he's getting, they're getting another opportunity to see what they can do. Third down and a long two needed for the first down from the 44. And again, Williams has trouble handling the snap. The Redskins pick it up at the 30-yard line. So Washington takes over. It is Dexter Manley, number 72, with his second fumble recovery of the afternoon. And the Redskins come up with excellent field position at the 30. I don't know what's happening here. I don't know if the quarterback is pulling out too quick if the center is moving. But at any rate, this is the third time that they've had problems handling the football. They've lost the ball twice. So the turnovers have been costly for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They trail 9-6. to six. But again, handing the Redskins a golden scoring opportunity here. Joe Theismann bringing the Redskins out of the huddle and up to the line of scrimmage. Dan Henning, the offensive coordinator, told us yesterday that Theismann is the most prepared and most motivated quarterback that he has ever been associated with. He's off to a great start. Penalty marker down. Long bound for Charlie Brown. And deflected away at the last possible moment by Mike Washington. That was very close to face guarding down there, but the penalty was thrown before the ball was thrown. I think we had an, uh, too many men on the line of scrimmage at that time. You can bet Joe Sides was going to be right in there to try to find out what happened. The illegal motion is the preliminary indication by Gordon McCarter, the referee against the Washington Redskins. Joe Gibbs, the head coach. Illegal motion, offense, declined, second down. You know, Gibbs was once the offensive coordinator here at uh, Tampa Bay under McKay. Here comes Leroy Selman, number 63. Oh, that's not fair. That's not fair, <laughs> Joe. You got your hands in his face. Any, any way you can stop that guy, it's tough. And they do try anything that they can do. Second and ten. The Redskins from the Tampa Bay 30. Mike Williams in motion. Theismann back to throw it. And Joe is buried at the 43 by the nose tackle. David Logan, number 76. Logan says some people are born to be actors, some people are born to be politicians, but he said he was born to be a nose tackle. He's another one of those pit ball players on this football field today. He just kept sorting people out, didn't he, until he got to the quarterback. I'll take this one. Well, that's it's tough work in there. We call it bull work. You know, there are a lot of people who just, just keep going, keep pulling, and you can't quit rushing. That statistic tells you a lot about Dave Logan, doesn't it? Yes, he played like an all-pro last year, and he just did not get the publicity. Loss of 10 on the play. It is third down and 20. For the Redskins, are now pushed back to the Tampa Bay 46. Charlie Brown in motion across the backfield. Theisman fading back to his 50, throws it away. 10 yards beyond everyone with no receivers open. And the Tampa Bay defense does a good job in holding the Redskins. Hayes will come in to do the punting. Next week, the NFL Today precedes it all, and we hope to have some interesting games depending on what happens in New York and other places this week regarding the strike activities. Well, my guys couldn't do me like that. You know, I'm, I'm trying to get in a new job, and I, I need to work. You better call those Steelers. <laughs> Hayes gets the punt away. Bounces at the eight, and this one, the Redskins will down, I believe, inside the five-yard line. I thought for a moment one of them would take that ball and slide into the end zone, but they downed it at the two, and so Tampa Bay is saddled with field position inside of its ten to start this drive for the second time in the football game. It's the Redskins nine and the Buccaneers six with nine minutes, ten seconds left to play in the first half. Heading with the snap. First down from their two-yard line. Second man through Owens. Bounces off a tackle. Tries to maintain his footing. Gets out to the five-yard line. This is when uh, the presence of that big back really becomes a factor. And the Bucks don't have that guy that can get him those tough yards to get him out of this very precarious field position. Miami and Baltimore have tightened up a bit. But the Dolphins leading it in the second period by a score 14 to 10. We'll have a recap of all the scores for you throughout the course of the afternoon. Detroit now with back-to-back -back field goals. 
six nothing over the Rams. Our score nine to six Redskins. Wilder, the former University of Missouri star, is out to the eight yard line. They need to net the eleven for the first down. So they're looking at a third and three as Rich Malott, number fifty seven, the Redskin linebacker, comes up to make the hits. Wilder was a pretty, Wilder was a pretty good back here. McKay said that he was he was pleased with him. He thought that he was as good as any fool back in the league. And he's, uh, he's selling us some pretty good things today. He makes some tough yardage in there. Well, we should point out they lost Jerry Eckwood for the year with an injury. And, of course, they traded Ricky Bell to the San Diego Chargers. On third and three, Williams backs up into the end zone, drops the pass off to Wilder. He'll be close for the first down. I think he's got it. But it took that second effort by Wilder before he was finally dropped by Malat. McDaniels made the tackle. You're going to see James Wilder come out of the backfield, do a little circle here. This is his value to this ball club, catching the ball coming out of the backfield and making some tough yardage here. He had three guys that made some strong hits on him, but he, they, he broke the tackle. Time out for measurement with 7 minutes 42 seconds remaining. They'll stretch the change, and it is a first down for Tampa Bay. So that's one they needed very badly, or they would have been punting from their end zone. And again, give the Redskins fine field position. Well, they need another first down to, to get them in a position where they can start using some other some of those other things that they have in the offense. They're still in pretty uh, shaky territory. It has been raining since the opening kickoff, for those of you who joined us late. First and ten, Tampa Bay. Bucks from their 11-yard line. Williams sticking with the short passing game, trying to hit Wilder. But he was well covered. Neil Okowitz, number 52, the middle linebacker, dogging him. Okowitz had that play all the way. He saw it from his inception. He got a good read on that play, and there was no way that the Bucks were going to get anything out of that. It'll be second down and 11. Williams right now is four out of six for 87 yards. Theismann, on the other hand, seven out of 11 for 64 yards by necessity. Both teams sticking to the short passing game with the exception of the bomb that uh, Williams threw to Kevin House for the only Tampa Bay touchdown. Second and 10, 11-yard line of Tampa Bay. One setback, and that's Wilder. Again, a loose football, and the Redskins have recovered it. Neil Okowitz, the middle linebacker. That is the fourth turnover by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the first half. And all on its changes. I don't know what's happening here. Once, once upon a time, Pittsburgh had a problem like this. We had seven turnovers on the exchange between the quarterback and the center. That is a problem, and it's a big opportunity for the Redskins. Neil Oakwood, number 52, on the play. Steve Wilson is the Buccaneers' center, and, of course, uh, Doug Williams is the quarterback, and they better get this thing worked out because they can't keep giving the ball to the Redskins this deep in their own territory. Riggins on the sweep to the 10 to the 5 and out of bounds. And again, the clap of thunder. I hate to keep referring to it, but it is so loud you can't avoid it. You know, Riggins was a two-time All-State uh, all runner in Kansas, 9-800 when, when he was coming out of high school. Mike Washington and Hugh Green collaborating on the stop. Joe Gibbs. A little upset over on the sideline. Actually, it has brightened up here a little bit, believe it or not. The rain is still coming down, but uh, behind us, at least, the skies are a little bit brighter. So perhaps better things in the second half. Riggins to the four-yard line. Scott Brantley, number 52, making the stop. has turned into an excellent linebacker. He replaced uh, the guy we used to call Batman, Richard Wood, who started at linebacker for the Buccaneers. Scott's a young player out of Florida, suffered a severe head injury during his last year in college. They thought he'd sure be a number one draft choice. And that dropped him down to a third, but he got medical clearance. He's turned into a fine player. Third down, the Redskins need three for the first down, and of course, four for the touchdown. They have to get almost to the one for the first. Theismann. Goes upstairs, and the pass is incomplete. Hard to get footage over there on the uh, far side, and Virgil C., number 80, the diminutive wide receiver who was a big plus off the bench last year for the Redskins. Couldn't get to it. 
And he had to round this pattern off then. Uh, he couldn't make that good sharp cut that he would love to have made because of the footing out there. Here's Mosley, one for one in the field goal department from 35 yards away. This will be a chip shot, but again, the field is wet. Theismann will put it down. It will be a 22-yard effort. It is good. So the field goal by Mosley makes it a 12 to 6 Washington lead with 624 left to play in the first half. Redskins are ready to kick off. Hayes to do the honors. Morton is deep along with Johnny Ray Smith. Ball bounces on the 20 yard line. Morton 15 20 25 up to the 30 and we get a penalty marker. Doug Williams, we are told, fumbled just one snap from center all of last season. And he has lost three in the first half of this game. So that will tell you a little bit something about the effect the weather is having on the Buccaneers exchange. This is the way the Tampa Bay turnovers have uh, come about. Four miscues. And this is the way the Redskins have capitalized on him. Two field goals. All things said, that's not very much. So the Tampa Bay defense doing its job. Illegal block above the waist of the receiving team during the return. First down. Coach McKay was telling us yesterday that this team, this young team, did not handle adversity really well, real well. And we'll have to see right now because they have had adversity today in those turnovers. Penalty moves the ball back to the 19-yard line, which is where the Buccaneers will start this drive. Williams. Secure hand on this snap, but has trouble getting the pass away intended for Wilder. Williams wound up flat on the seat of his pants, and I think it was Perry Brooks, number 69, who tore through there and really belted him just as he got rid of the football. Look at the water on his hands and that wet towel that he has. His hands still are not really dry, so he should get a, a cleaner towel in there to try to dry his hands off before he gets that snap. Check with me October 10th. Second and 10 from the 19-yard line. Six minutes, 11 seconds left to play first half. It is brightening up a little bit, although it is raining, though not as hard as earlier. Owens. Up to the 23-yard line goes James Owens. Millard on the tackle. Rich Millard has been in on a ton of tackles, number 57 for the Washington Redskins. Last year, about this time, the Redskins had all their linebackers hurt. They had a great deal of difficulty. They started off 0-5, and, and then suddenly they turned it around and won eight of their last 11 games and finished 500 on the season. Buccaneers did a good job coming back late in the year, too, and, of course, uh, won the division championship by beating Detroit on the final Sunday. Third down, six. From the 22, Williams intended for T-Bell, number 35. Tony Peters, number 23, for the Washington Redskins. Does the breakup job, one-time member of the Cleveland Browns. We had some big battles with... Uh, with Peters when he was over at Cleveland. Lynn Swan, John Starworth, they remember him. Swider in to do the punting. This will be only a second effort of the afternoon. Another one of those pit guys, Swider. Blocked by the Redskins. Scramble for the ball in the end zone. Let's see who got it. It was Curtis Jordan on the block, number 25. And Obradovich in a wrestling match in the end zone, and I believe the Redskins have it. And if that's the case, you're looking at a touchdown. It is a touchdown, and it was Jordan who recovered it. There's Jordan coming at number 25, an ex-Tampa Bay Buck. He was released last year, and the Bucks picked him, the Redskins picked, picked him up in December. There's a race for the football, and the, <laughs> the and Redskins come up with the ball. So the Redskins score on the block kick, and Mosley is on to try the extra point. As the Washington lead is up to 18 to 6. Mosley misses yet another extra point try. That's strange. He's kicked two field goals, but he's missed 
two extra points. Still, the Redskins lead it 18 to 6 with five minutes, 20 seconds left to play in the first half. Buff keeps it low and on the ground, squibs it down to Morton at the 15, 20, and stopped at the 27 yard line. Boy, it looked like weather like this, and it's still raining. And Joe, you got to be happy you're up here instead of down here. I, I am, Frank. It, it's tough out there when the weather uh, becomes a problem like that. The field, uh, field conditions are, are less than desirable. Well, three turnovers by the Buccaneers, and then the block punt has really murdered them here in the first half. The K can't be too happy about this. They had a lot of problems last week with turnovers, and it continues this week. Doug Williams. How did he get out of that? 35, 40, and dives out of bounds and sails under the Washington Redskins bench. Dave Butts, number 65, and Manley were after him. Well, Doug... Doug is getting a lot of time here to throw the football, but no one breaks open. Hearing those big defensive linemen coming in too high, and Doug is trying to get, get some blocking here. He finally sees that he can't get any, and he goes out of bounds. Now watch this slide. Right under the Redskin bench. Tony Peters gave him a good shot as he was going out of bounds, but Williams is all right, and the Buccaneers have the first down at their 41-yard line. Wilder, the lone setback. First down, Buccaneers from their 41. The sun has broken through. Williams, who may be the toughest quarterback to sack in the National Football League. He always gets rid of that ball. Well, it, it's not a, a, an attribute to their offensive line, but Doug just has a tremendously quick release, and he's a very strong, agile player back there. Very difficult to trap him. The tackle was made by uh, Mendenhall, number 76. Uh, just a little bit late. They rule it an incomplete and forward pass, and it'll be second and 10. For the Buccaneers at their 42, it is lightening up here appreciably. And I mean lightning in terms of the sky lightning, not the lightning in terms of bolts, which we saw earlier. Pitch to Wilder. Trying to get outside. Got the lead block that time from Gene Sanders, number 74, but couldn't quite get around the corner. Rich Millard again on the stop, along with Vernon Dean, number 32. Who's starting today in place of Joe Lavender. I mean, he's, he's done himself real well today, too. He came up and made a strong hit on Theo Bell in the first half, first quarter, that is. And uh, he left the game with the, with the bruised shoulder, but he's back. Up a four yards on that play. It is third down and six for the Buccaneers at their 45 yard line. They trail 18 to 6, 452. Left to play in the first half. Williams running out of trouble, motioning his receivers around. He's got Wilder at the 45, Wilder at the 40, 35. James Wilder is down to the 32. Great job of scrambling by Williams and then an excellent job of running the football by Wilder in very heavy traffic. Mark Murphy finally made the stop. The value of having a quarterback that's mobile. You see, he's going to get a little rush here. Then he gets outside of containment, finds time to get a little receiver get open. He's threatening to run, so he backs up and he's directing traffic. Then he finds Wilder, number 32, over the middle. And Wilder does a good job of running, and he's finally brought down by number 29, Mark Murphy. Several missed tackles there, including one by Peters. Of course, all the Redskin defensive linemen now go back with their tongues hanging out after chasing Williams on that last play. Wilder on the sweep. Knocked out of bounds at the 31 after a pickup of two yards. Peters over there along with Jarris White. You know that member of the Buccaneers. That's the uh, second time in, in, on this series that they've had a toss play outside. Uh, and that's uh, that's too dangerous of, dangerous of, of ball handling in, in this kind of weather. He almost bottled that one. Second and eight. Bucks got a drive going. They're at the Washington Redskin 31-yard line. Need a touchdown here to get back into it. Straight ahead power. 
as they try to grind it out and pick up three or four yards in the play on Wilder's charge. They spot it at the 25-yard line. It'll be third down and two. This is a second period score with the Colts now coming from behind and in front of the Dolphins. Frank Cush looking for his first win. Houston leads Seattle 7-0 second period. Our score 18-6. Redskins late in the first half. Little over three minutes left. Another fumble on the exchange. Williams feels this one. And we get a penalty marker drop. We had movement in the, in the offensive line there. The Bucks have not had a problem moving the football whenever they can uh, maintain possession of it. Yeah, they're false start. Number 73 offense. They're self-destructing. They're stopping themselves. Charlie Hanna, number 73. Guilty of the false start. Instead of third and three, they got third and eight now, which creates a different set of circumstances. Hannah, of course, Ball comes start. from a great football Number play family. Number 73 offense, still third down. There were four Hannah boys who played at Alabama. His brother John, of course, one of the premier guards in football with the Patriots. Penalty moves it back to the 30. It is now third down and eight from the Redskin 30. Theo Bell is wide to the right side. Williams in trouble. They roll it in the grass. No fumble, and one of the officials really took a shot there. <laughs> they did blow it dead. Tony McGee, number 78, the former New England Patriot. Watch 78, and then watch the official and see what happens to him. There was just too many people around. They were worried about this rush. Doug couldn't find anyone open, and he gets smashed right there. He was ruled in the grass. <laughs> You want to be an official, Joe? It's rough out there for everybody. It's a jungle out there. You wonder why those officials have to be in shape. <laughs> Today it is better to be in the booth up here. Nice and safe. Swider in to do the punting. Had his last one blocked on him. No rush this time by the Redskins, who planned return all the way. Into the end zone for the touchback. So the Buccaneers with a golden opportunity on that drive wind up with a penalty. And then, of course, the big sack by Tony McGee, who just joined the Redskins a couple of weeks ago, 13-year veteran from the New England Patriots. 36 yards on the punt. Don't forget, next Saturday on CBS, the big game, Nebraska and Penn State. Nebraska at total yardage yesterday, almost 900 yards against New Mexico State. They wanted, I think, 68 to nothing. So you know what Penn State can do with Todd Blackledge. I know you've been following him in your days in Pittsburgh. He's Very a Penn nice State quarterback. Man. Yes, just a junior, too. Riggins on the sweep. Run out of bounds at the 24-yard line. You know, his father is an offensive uh, line coach at Pittsburgh now. Todd Blackledge. At the university or with the Steelers? With the Steelers. Is he? Dana Nafziger making the stop for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Riggins has already carried the ball 16 times for 46 yards. That's a lot of carries for one half. But he's the guy that can do it. Uh, he's, he's in good shape. He's uh, been lifting weights. He came in in, in a tremendous physical condition. He's, he's prepared for situations like this. Let's keep in mind they're without the services of Wilbur Jackson, who was injured last week. But they did pick up Clarence Williams from San Diego. A little hit screen out to the wide receiver, Art Monk. Monk's going to come back this way. 20, 25, 30. And Monk fumbles the ball at the 35. I mean, five people had their hands on that football before. And look at the officials. Two of them are diving into the pile, trying to find out who's got it. I don't think they know. Well, the Redskins obviously claim that they have it, and it's Jacoby, the offensive tackle, number 66, who came up with the football. You know, in a pile like that, I think that you just have to have the knack to go in there and finding it. There's a quick screen outside to Monk, and one of the things that Monk does real well, once he, once he catches the football with that 4-5 speed, is, is run. He's picking his way real well, and he covered up the ball pretty good, but he had a good hit, and I'm sure the ball was a little bit wet, and everybody's having a difficult time trying to get it. 
There's one guy, he misses it. It slips behind him. You think Brown's got it there, number 34? Looked like it, right? Jacoby somehow wound up with the football, and the Redskins have a first down at the 49-yard line of Tampa Bay. Two men in warning. We'll be back in just a moment. In the National Football League with Joe Green, the ex-Pittsburgh Steeler. I'm Frank Lieber, Tampa Stadium. The sun has come out, and it is just barely drizzling right now. With two minutes left to play in the first half, the Redskins leading the Buccaneers 18-6 in Washington with a first down. At the Tampa Bay 49, Theisman looks left, goes to his right. And in trouble behind the line of scrimmage. David Stahl's number 65, and David's got a lot of things on his mind this week. In addition to playing football, he is also the assistant player rep, and his wife is about to give birth, so I don't know uh, what he's going to do here in terms of priorities. Well, I think he had uh, Joe Theismann on his mind then. It's a big play when, he, when you can get a sack, particularly at a time like this in the ball game. Halftime, just a minute and 40 seconds away with the clock moving, and don't forget, Brent Nerve. We'll be here at halftime. That is the fourth sack by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We'll give you a recap of all the scores and highlights. Monk in motion across the backfield. They go on the draw to Riggins. And Riggins is upended at the 45-yard line. Tampa Bay defense comes after you. Norris Thomas making the hit there. Came up strong. He's a little guy. Came up strong and hit uh, Riggins pretty hard. Kept him from going out of bounds, stopping the clock, too. Buccaneers going to call time here in hopes of forcing the Redskins to punt and getting at least a shot at a punt return and maybe one or two plays from scrimmage before intermission. Again, a reminder, Nebraska and Penn State. The Cornhuskers ranked third in the nation. Penn State ranked number eight. And you'll see it next Saturday afternoon at 3.30 Eastern time on most of these CBS stations. Undefeated, untied, and CBS will be there. Lots of exciting college action on CBS yesterday, and that'll be the case uh, the remainder of this 1982 season. As CBS is back in the college football business for the first time in 19 years. Timeout situation. Redskins have all three of theirs, and that's the first used by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. John McKay. You know, we asked John yesterday, I asked him, how long are you going to coach? And he said, you know, I'm 59 years old. I'm now the oldest coach in the National Football League. Seemed quite proud of it. And though he has a contract that guarantees that he will be the chief executive officer of the Buccaneers when he decides to retire, he gave us no indication at all. He said, uh, you know, I'm liking it. I'm enjoying it. And I'm just going to stick around for a while. That's right. And he, he is enjoying it. As a matter of fact, you know, as you said, he pointed out that play that they were having problems with. And he just diagrammed for us on the board. Third down, 17. The Redskins at their 45-yard line, leading 18 to 6. Monk in motion. Theismann back to throw it. Intended for Monk, who makes a one-handed grab at the 47-yard line and carries it down to the 43. Still not enough for the first down. Hugh Green made the stop. Hugh Green was back in coverage here. I'm sure they had a double cover on here. Pretty good catch and, uh, here. He was underneath. And this is, you have to have a big play man in your offense, and Art Monk is the guy for the Redskins. Of course, the Buccaneers can't say enough about uh, Hugh Green. We were asking McKay yesterday to compare him with Lawrence Taylor. He says Green is a much better cover man than Taylor is, though Taylor may be the better pass rusher. The Bucs would prefer to have uh, Hugh Green in the, in the coverage, uh, although they say that he, he can rush the quarterback really well. But, uh, Hugh Green can do anything he wants to do out there. I would think so. <laughs> he, used to, he used to say that about you, as I recall. <laughs> Anything Joe wants, he gets. Fourth and five. And Hayes in to do the punting. A minute and one second left to play in the first half. And the Buccaneers now are down to one timeout. Holt is deep along with Theo Bell. been whistled once for a delay of game. Not a punt. Low snap. Hayes gets it away. Over the head of both receivers and bounces at the one and is going to be down there. So the Redskins down another punt inside the Tampa Bay five-yard line. Officials talking it over. Let's see. We got a problem here or not. They may 
ruled that that I didn't see it go into the end zone. They may say his momentum took him into the end zone. They're going to give it to the Buccaneers at the 20-yard line. The, the, third, ball. the ball didn't go in, but the man who recovered it, I think a portion of his body may have been into the end zone. So they call it a touchback instead of the ball being down inside the five at the two-yard line. You're exactly right, Frank. His, his, his uh, legs were in the end zone uh, when he touched the football. Number 47, Greg Wheaton. As the time left in the first half, Redskins leading the Buccaneers 18-6. get a flag thrown. Maybe too much time here. Buccaneers offense seems to be in disarray. Three and less. Did you hear what he said? Well, they called timeouts what they did. So that's the third and last timeout is what he said. So the Buccaneers, I think they had to call time in order to to not get five the penalty. Yards, the right. same, you know, five yards on the delay of game. So the Bucs are out of timeouts, and I imagine at this point they'll run it down. I don't think they could stop the clock to be the Redskins wanting to call timeout now. The Bucs would probably be just, just as happy to let the clock run out and get, get this half done with and try to regroup and come out in the second half with, uh, hopefully, with a, hopefully with a better performance. Well, they've had trouble handling the snap from center. They've had the one big play, the touchdown pass from Williams to Kevin House. The Redskins over the years have been a very opportunistic football team, and today it's, it's, it's no different. They've, uh, they've made the big play on punts, and they've made the big play on offense and defense. So they've, they've had a pretty good uh, showing this first half. Wilder at the 17-yard line. Kuban, number 50, coming up to make the stop for the Washington Redskins. See if anybody stops the clock here. If not, lost of three yards, second and 13. Time for one more play unless somebody stops it here. Well, Joe Gibbs, the head coach of the Redskins, uh, takes at least part of the credit for the Buccaneers winding up with Doug Williams when he was an assistant at Tampa. He went down to Grambling for a week and, and worked with uh, Williams and came back with a glowing report for John McKay. That should do it for the first half as Wilder takes the handoff for a couple of yards. And the Buccaneer fans are not very happy about their team's performance in the first half, particularly the mistakes, which have haunted the Bucs now for a game and a half. Redskins leading at halftime, 8-6 to six over the Tampa Bay Bucket. Although off in the distance, it's hard to say, but uh, could be in for another round of showers before the afternoon is out. And Jeff Hayes, who's been doing the kicking off of the Redskins, getting set to do his thing. Capacity here at Tampa Stadium is 72,128. And those who ducked underneath the stands for a portion of the first half are back again because all you see is orange in every direction. This stadium, of course, will be the site for Super Bowl 18 a year from January. Next January, they're in Pasadena, and then they come to Tampa for the very first time. Love those Super Bowls, Frank. Yes, sir. You've been in enough of them. You ought to know. <laughs> Morton having a little trouble handling it, gets it at the 5, 15, and really cracked at the 20-yard line as he is decked by Pete Cronin, number 54 of the Washington Redskins. So we will see how the Buccaneers hang out of the football this half. You know, one thing, Joe, I noticed that they've uh, abandoned now is the shotgun. They used to run the shotgun. I, I think that they, the reason they stopped doing that is because of the stadiums that they played in, the noise. It was very difficult for Doug Williams to hear the signal. I don't know if the shotgun would have helped uh, that problem with the exchange in the first half, but but it's interesting to note, Wilder taking the handoff. You know, most people coming into this game expected an aerial circus, but because of the weather conditions, they've run the football a lot more than we thought they would. It has, it has changed uh, the, the way the ball game is going uh, a great deal. It's caused for, for those fumbles and such. I, you know, 
I bet Doug Williams probably took maybe 50 snaps while they were in the locker room trying to get that situation corrected. But it's not raining in the locker room, Joe. <laughs> it's a little different, isn't it? I knew you were going to come back with that one. <laughs> Second and nine. It's not raining out here either right now. Williams. He does have a gun. Theo Bell for the first down at the 36-yard line. Williams can throw that ball about five yards off the ground on a straight line, 30 or 40 yards if he wants. Oh, he's a tremendous passer. Theo Bell, uh, coming from Pittsburgh, runs very good patterns, very precise patterns, and a tough, tough man to cover. You talked to Theo this weekend? Yes, I did. What did he say? Happy to be here? He said he's pleased to be down here. He said one adjustment he had to make was that he had to shorten his pass routes uh, somewhat. He said in Pittsburgh he got a little bit more time uh, to run his pattern. Another adjustment he's had to make is going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> he did a lot of that in Pittsburgh. First and ten, Buccaneers trying to get fired up here. Williams again completing the pass, this time at the 50-yard line for the first down. Kevin House. Tony Peters, number 23, making the stop. Kevin House is a very dangerous man to cover. You have to be very much concerned with him getting behind you. As you see right here, he stopped, and the back was just a little bit slow getting there. McKay told us that Kevin House reminds him a lot of Paul Warfield, who used to play for the Cleveland Browns, who was maybe one of the most dangerous receivers ever in the NFL. First down, Buccaneers from midfield. Crowd hasn't had much to cheer about. Wilder breaks a tackle up the middle and carries it through for nine to the 41-yard line. Rich Malott making the stop. Wilder is the all-time leading rusher at the University of Missouri. Well, this, this Buck offensive line had uh, been much maligned this past week, and you saw there they cleared a big hole for, for James Wilder to get a first down. So the Buccaneers have a drive going now. Started back at their 22-yard line after they received the opening kickoff here in the second half. First and 10 from the 40-yard line of the Washington Redskins. The fake to Owens. Williams, little dump pass to Wilder, and Wilder slipped as he tried to turn up field, and the ball came loose and completed forward passes. The ruling, Vernon D, number 32, making the stop. Vernon Dean is uh, making his present fail today. He's uh, He's been all over the field. I remember we saw Vernon last year in the blue-gray game we did, and the pro scouts are very high on him. Of course, he comes from San Diego State, and uh, that's a school that has always turned out some great defensive backs. Willie Buchanan, of course, uh, the Haynes brothers. They, uh, they learn how to play one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, at San Diego State, and that's, some, that's what the pros look for, the ability to play one-on-one. -on -one Third down and less than a yard, and Wilder crashes through for the first down at the 39-yard line. Good block from Carver leading the way, number 28. Let's see if uh, one of the Redskins was shaken up, or is he just getting up slowly? Brooks, but he appears to be okay. It is a first down. Buccaneers at the 39-yard line. Wilder is not a bad bat, Frank. He's a good one. Yes, he is. You know, we haven't seen much of today is uh, Jimmy Giles, the tight end. i got to believe Williams got to start going to him pretty soon. Probably saving him for the big play. Pretty good pop that time on James Owens. Who is stopped for the loss back at the 41? Tony Peters comes up from the secondary. Well, that's something that Tony could always do in, in his days back in Cleveland. You know, he with those wide outs roaming in the backfield there, he he'd always make a good strong hit on them. Strong tackle. First, now we don't have the rain. What you've got now is the humidity, and that ground, Joe, has got to feel like it's got steam coming out of it. Oh, and it's really tough on those big guys out there. You feel like you have lead in your shoes when you're out there running. They're all wet. Second down, 11. Tampa Bay at the Redskin 41. Doug Williams. Flushed out of the pocket, runs to the 35. A penalty marker is down as Williams reaches the 31-yard line. That flag was thrown uh, 10 or 15 yards downfield. Any idea what that might be? Frank, I'm going I'm to be real safe, and I'm not going to even speculate on that. <laughs> well, the call is against the Redskins. 
I think it might have been pass interference. Or they might uh, might have put a hit on the receiver outside of the the uh, zone downfield. So the Buccaneers will get a break here. The referee, Gordon McCarter, getting a little adjustment to his uh, audio equipment there. Got the microphone thing still there. Looks to be all right. Still on the hip. Let's see if it still works. We are picking up the flag. There is no illegal contact foul because the quarterback had left the pocket at the time that the foul occurred. So they're going to pick up the penalty marker, which you see more and more of these days. The officials are having conferred. One official saw a penalty and the other one explained to him that the quarterback left the pocket area which uh, changed the entire situation, so they said no penalty. So spot the ball at the 31-yard line, and it'll be third down and one for the Buccaneers at the Redskins 31. Gordon Jones, wide receiver in motion on third and one. He's throwing, and he's got Jones for the first down at the 24-yard line. Out of bounds at the 23. That surprised you in third and one? Well, we saw them working on that play yesterday in, a, in their goal line short, short yardage offense. They fake here to uh, James Owens, number 26, and uh, they get the ball out here to uh, Gordon Jones, number 84, another one of those ex-Pittsburgh Panther players. They have a total of five ex-Pitt Panthers on the Tampa Bay team. They used to call this... USC East when they had so many Southern Cal players. Now I guess they can call it Pitt South. <laughs> Very appropriate. It's a first down for the Buccaneers at the 23-yard line of the Washington Redskins. They've held the ball since the start of the second half. Williams pursued by Butts. Butts had him by the jersey, trying to spin him around. Now we get a penalty marker thrown, and this is going to be illegal grounding. That is one of the reasons that he does not get sacked. He gets rid of the ball real quick. You'll see Dave Butts does a good job of beating uh, number 61, Greg Roberts. Dave Butts, number 65, puts good pressure on the quarterback and causes the sack. Gordon McCarter pulling the flag on him as Butts really chasing after him. And the penalty is for intentional grounding. Number 12, offense. The play involves loss of down at this spot because the spot of the foul is more than 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage. Well, that explains it all. Couldn't have said any better myself, Frank. So move the ball back to the 35-yard line. Loss of down of the play makes the down second. Now the Buccaneers are looking at 22 yards for the first down. They have to reach the 13-yard line to pick up a first. Gordon Jones is wide to the right side. Gerald Carter is in the slot inside of him, and House is off to the left. Williams, big opening. 35, 30, down to the 25. Spun out of bounds, leads the football there. He went out of bounds, but dropped the football inbounds. So now there's a discussion going out over that matter. Tony Peters, number 23 on the hit. Normally you go out of bounds, you take the thing with you. Here's to be the Buccaneers retaining possession. They say that Williams did indeed go out of bounds. So mark the ball at the 26-yard line. Look at it again and watch what happens after he's tackled. And the, well, the, the pressure breaks, the, breaks down right there and then Doug deserts the pocket. And he's trying to tell Jimmy Giles, number 88, to block this guy. And he didn't see him too late. There you saw it. Doug left the ball on the sideline, but he was down before he dropped the ball. Third down, 13 for the first down. From the 26, Williams pursued by the Redskins and sacked. Back at the 44-yard line. How about that pass rush? Dexter Manley, number 72 from the right side, would not be denied. Well, we're going to have a dog here. You got 57, Malat coming in. Then you have uh, number 72, Dexter Manley makes a good play right here. 
What set this up, though, was the was the blitz coming up the inside, or rather the dog, with, with three linebackers coming up the middle, forcing him outside to the defensive end, Dexter Manley, number 72. What's the difference between a blitz and a dog? Is there? There is a difference. Uh, the dog is when you send your linebackers, and the blitz is when maybe when you send uh, the, the secondary people and all linebackers. All right, punting situation now for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Swider angling this one for the far side. Mike Nelms feels it at the 10, takes it back to the 15-yard line, and is buried at that point. Davis got down there quickly to make the stop for the Buccaneers. Time burst at 10 at their 15-yard line. Well, let's see what Joe does. Uh, Doug started putting it in the air a few minutes ago when the, when the, the, the rain stopped. So let's see what Theismann does right now. Theismann comes out throwing. It's Charlie Brown at the 20, and Brown is out of bounds at the 21-yard line. Charlie, a draft choice last year who did not see any action in regular season play after suffering a knee injury in preseason. He's been one of the big surprises this year for the Redskins. Here you're going to see uh, number 87, Charlie Brown catching the ball, catching another pass out here, and you're going to see number 53, Hugh Green making the, the tackle on him. Hugh Green covering a wide out. That's, uh, that's a mismatch, I would think. If anybody can get close to a wide out among linebackers, though, it's got to be Hugh Green. I would agree. Second down, four. Redskins at their 21-yard line. Theismann sending Art Monk in motion. Fakes it. Gives it to Riggins. Riggins at the 25. And has enough for the first down at the 29-yard line. David Stahl making the stop with an assist from Dave Logan. Number 76. Let's update some scores for you. The Rams, uh, Burt Jones and the new Ram offense still scored us in the third period against the Lions. Nine to nothing. This is now at halftime with the defending world champions leading the Denver Broncos by seven. And Houston over Seattle in the third period by a margin of a field goal. First and ten. Our score, Redskins 18, Buccaneers 6. Redskins from their 28, Riggins. Out across the 30 to the 32-yard line. That is Riggins' 19th carry of the afternoon for 61 yards. Andy Hawkins made the stop. I think once, uh, once you see the Redskins get a little bit better field position, I think you're going to see Joe Theismann maybe open it up a little bit. Rams, by the way, in that game out of the coast have made a quarterback change, and Vince Ferragamo has come into the second half to spell Burt Jones. So I would imagine after this game, the Rams are going to have another quarterback controversy all over again, if they haven't already. Second and six, Riggins kind of threading his way up the middle across the 35 and up to the 36-yard line. Hugh Green, number 53, making the stop. Leroy Selman did a good job of uh, anticipating that play, but the Redskins' uh, offensive line did an even better job. After he anticipated, they did a good job of blocking him out. And by the way, for that Ram quarterback change, apparently is not that they've just pulled Burt Jones, but that he has an injury, a, a pulled hamstring. Third down and a yard. Washington giving it to Riggins. And Riggins with a great strength of his. Beyond the 40, up to the 44-yard line. On sheer effort, he got five yards. Power. Power. This guy is, has tremendous power in his legs. You're going to see him run over five people here. He, they get a lot of people around the ball here, and you're going to see number 41, Thomas, trying to pull the ball out, and he should have been trying to make the tackle. John Riggs is a very strong runner, determined runner. First down, Washington Redskins at the 44-yard line, and uh, in the heat and humidity here in Tampa, Riggins getting a breather. That never did me any good. A flea flicker. Wamsley tossing it back to Theismann, and Joe is trapped behind the line. <laughs> the flea flicker to Otis Wamsley, number 39, who just laterally back to Theismann. But no one was open downfield. Well, that's the kind of play that you, uh, you try to go for the distance. And when you're playing a zone and you don't fool them and you get no one deep, it results in a sack. You're going to see right here 
Andy Hawkins, number 59, making the sack on Joe Theismann. Good play by Hawkins, who succeeded David Lewis as a starting linebacker for Tampa Bay this year. Lewis uh, since traded to the San Diego Chargers. Loss in the play of five yards and a second down, 15. Tampa Bay now with five quarterback sacks. That's been the brightest part of their game. Theismann. Completes the pass, and then it's dropped over on the far sideline by Virgil C. You know, getting back to the Riggins story about his strength a moment ago, I noticed that the Redskins not only have a strength coach, but they have an assistant strength coach, which I don't think anybody in the league has. And Tampa Bay, we're out of their practice facility. I was surprised they're one of the few teams in the league that do not have a strength coach. I tell you, with so many people going to uh, those uh, the strength coaches and, and, and having everyone involved in the weight program, you cannot compete in this league if you don't uh, follow suit. And it looked from what we saw that their program was not nearly as advanced, would you say, as a lot of people? And it, in particular, the Redskins offensive line. They have uh, a lot of young people there that are doing a fine job. Third down, 15. Feisman going long for Art Monk. Monk trying to get between two defenders and really having a trouble fighting his way through. And he claimed he's interfered with, but the officials did not see it that way. Well, Joe Thousand is going to let it go now. He's getting a little bit of time. They're just bouncing that three three man front all around. And here you're going to see Monk being bumped first by John, by John Holt. And then he's tripped by Cedric Brown, number 34. Think it should have been interference? Come on, come on, rookie. It looked as though it was interference. The, the rookie is making his first opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Low snap, and Hayes does a good job in getting it away. Theo Bell is back deep at the 18-yard line. The ex stealer up to the 25 is stopped just short of the 30. So Tampa Bay will put it in play there. Didier making the stop. The Redskins leading 18 to 6 a moment ago. Doug Williams trying to get the offense in high gear. See if he continues to throw it. Wanted the quick throw that time, but it wasn't there. And it goes to an alternate receiver, Jimmy Giles. And the tight end is after the 44-yard line. And as we said earlier, Giles seems to have been a forgotten man today up until this point. Tony Peters was, was holding on for dear life then. Doug here is going to his, alternate, uh, his primary receiver here. He checks. He's not open, then he goes to his secondary receiver, number 88, Jimmy Giles over the middle. Tony Peters on the tackle here is, try, is holding on for dear life because that was possibly a touchdown saving tackle. A few years ago, Williams would have just taken off on that. Now he stands back there, looks around, picks out his second or third receiver, and in that case, picks up a first down. First and 10 Buccaneers at their 43. This time, Williams rolling to his right. And again, hitting your left, he didn't hold it, I don't believe. Did he or did he? Yes, he did. Giles with the reception at the 48-yard line of the Redskins just short of the first down. Mark Murphy was back there defending. Yeah, that, little, that little short sprint that Doug did then, he, he tried it early in the first half. Once he got away with it, it was a naked uh, sprint. Who do you like in this football game next Saturday? Big one. Well, I'm from, I've been, spent a lot of years in Pennsylvania. So uh, I think I have to go with Todd Blackledge. He's having a tremendous year. Second down one. Buccaneers at the Redskin 49-yard line. They trail 18 to 6. And a good pop at the line of scrimmage by the middle linebacker, Neil Olkowitz, who hits Owens just as he got the football. And there is nothing for it. Olkowitz, a free agent out of uh, Maryland. Had some injury problems in the past, but he's done a splendid job for the Redskins in the middle. Yeah, they call him uh, the real. He, he has a. He's not too tall for a middle linebacker, and they they got a nickname for him. And I'll give it to you in a minute. You can't read your writing, Joe. Right? <laughs> Very difficult. <laughs> Third down and three. Williams couldn't hold it. Gerald Carter, number 87, open. Carter, second-year man from Texas A&M. And McDaniel, Redskin reserve defensive back in the hip, which will force the Buccaneers into the punting situation. Carter got a lot of work last week, and uh, since they go a lot to this three-wide receiver offense, he's the third man and caught three passes against the Vikings, which he was very pleased with. Slider. 
in to do the potting. And Mike Nelms, the Pro Bowl returner, is deep for Washington. Nelms waiting at the 10, fields this one at the 6. Up to the 10, 15. And a flag goes down as he's dropped at the 20-yard line. Nelms, a very exciting football player. Redskins got him uh, out of Canada for a song. I worked out a couple of times with Mike Nams. He's from Fort Worth, isn't he, down near neck of the woods? Yes, he, I worked out with he and Greg Hawthorne, and I tell you, for a big guy, 270 pounds, working out with speedsters like that, it's, it's a long day. He trying to make a punt returner out of you? <laughs> I was trying to make a, uh, a weight man out of him. Walk off against the Redskins. Illegal block above the waist during the return. Number 56 receiving team, first down. Redskins will take over on their eight-yard line. You can see the penalty very clearly here. Nelms coming back on the return. There it is, the illegal block above the waist. Timeout here at Tampa Stadium. Coach, he looks a little drier than he did in the first half. You ought to work out. You challenge him to a game of racquetball sometime. You know how good he is? He's won his age championship nationally. Joe Gibbs. Riggins on the carry over on the right side. You know, we mentioned a little bit earlier that the Redskins are without the services of Wilbur Jackson, who was hurt last week. We should also mention they don't have Joe Washington, who was hurt earlier, but who they expect to get back after a knee surgery uh, two or three weeks if we're still playing football. Yes, we spoke with uh, offensive coordinator and uh, head uh, assistant head coach yesterday, uh, Henning, and he told us that Joe Washington is a very integral part of this offense, but it would not change how they uh, their game plan. They would use Riggins and Washington much, much in the same manner. That is one at a time. Riggins again over the right side. Looked like the same play, and he gets it out to the 15-yard line. As the Redskins kept four tight ends on their final roster of 49 players, which is one more than usual because of the fact they run that one-back offense. Again, Keep in mind and put it down right now. 3.30 Eastern time, the battle of the gridiron Goliaths in college football. Nebraska and Penn State both ranked in the top ten at Penn State. That's a tough place to play. Yes, it is. It's also a tough place to get to. You ever tried to get there? Yep. Franco took me up there once. Third down three. Redskins from their 15-yard line. Theismann waited a little bit too long. I think we'd have to attribute that sack to the coverage. Andy Hawkins came from his left linebacker position and made the sack on, on Joe Theismann. Theismann had plenty of time, but it was it, this was a coverage sack. I tell you, these guys up in the line really are happy to see things happen like this. Joe got lost in the well back there, too, with Leroy Selman jumping up in his face, and he wasn't able to find a receiver. That is the sixth time that Theismann has been sacked by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, whose defense continues to be outstanding. The offensive turnovers, let's kill Tampa Bay. We have not had a score here in the second half with a minute 40 left in the third period. Great kick by Hayes. Theo Bell back to his 37, up to the 40 and the 45-yard line, and the Buccaneers will take over, and things get a little rough down there. Well, this is good field position for the Bucs. And we're going to see what they any time, but when you have any experience, it makes it even more difficult. First and ten for the Bucs at their 45-yard line. They trail 18 to 6. Doug Williams rolling to his left. Fires downfield and almost has it picked off. Carter, number 87, was in the area. Got his hands on the football. There's Neil Olkowitz, the middle linebacker. What'd you say his nickname was, oh, Joe? Oh, I love it. I love it. I've just found it. <laughs> they call him the Mole because he's only six one, six foot tall. <laughs> the Mole? The Mole. See, next week you'll get ready for your next game and you'll write a lot more legibly. You'll be able to read your own scratchings here. I, wish, can... I wish we could show the fans <laughs> your sheet here of preparation. It looks like the encyclopedia. Well, you know, you live and learn there. <laughs> Second down and 10. Bucks at their 45-yard line. Williams is now 11 out of 20 for 164 yards. Over the middle. 
and completes it to Jerry Bell, number 82. Jerry's a rookie from Arizona State. Jarris White, number 45, the ex-Buccaneer, made the stop. Good play by Dexter Manley and uh, putting a lot of pressure on Doug Williams. Bell is another one of the top draft choices of the Buccaneers this year. Fine. Outside receiver and tight end. He can really play either way. You know, like a lot of these rookies, they have uh, made this roster on both ball clubs by doing outstanding jobs on the special teams. You can make the ball club on special teams. Third down. Buccaneers still need five for the first down from the 50. Williams stepping up in the pocket. He'll run for the first. He's at the 45, 40. Gets a block from House and takes it inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. Williams grabs for the first down. Another one of those uh, fine qualities uh, in Doug Williams, the, the ability to run. He couldn't find anyone open, and if there's a big open space there, and he has to take it. It's just too inviting. He finally gets a block. Well, he did get a block from when he receives, and he had to slide in to third base. So the Buccaneers driving from the Redskins 37-yard line. Clock is running down. I don't know if they'll get this playoff before the quarter ends. I do not think so. That is the end of the third period. Right, Frank. Uh, they, they have got a first down here, and they're in good position to, to get on the board. Bell is in motion. Doug Williams back to throw. Goes deep, but out of bounds. For a moment, like he had house open. But the pass is well behind him, and Peters was moving up on him pretty quick. This is the way things look at the end of three periods of play. Look at the, uh, the total yardage edge here to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So the big one, however, is the turnover category. You can have all the yardage in the world, but the turnovers will negate everything. That will negate everything that you try to do. Uh, the turnovers, they're, they're just something that, that uh, make coaches retire early. Second and ten for the Bucs at the Redskin 37-yard line. They have not turned it over in the second half. All four of those turnovers in the first half. And three of them leading to scores. Williams with a sideline throw to Kevin House. That's a first down at the 20. Tony Peters shoved him out of bounds. Hard man to operate against. The Redskins have been in this man coverage all day here. Tony Peters has had uh, Kevin House, and Kevin is a big play threat here. He brings the ball in and gets the first down. It is a first down for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the 20. We talked to House some yesterday. Very impressive young man. Yes, he is, and he says he wants to be in the Pro Bowl this year. He, wants, he thinks he's one of the best receivers in the league, and he just wants an opportunity to prove that. There are some who thought he should have been in the Pro Bowl last year. From the 20, Williams. First down at the 8-yard line as Williams delivered the football to House. Jarris White on the tackle. That is House's fourth reception and will put him over 100 yards. That's too big a cushion right there that Jarris White, number 45, is giving, Kevin. He's in scoring territory, so you'd like to try to tighten up that coverage a little bit. Brown suddenly comes alive with the Buccaneers having a first down and goal to go from the 8-yard line. Again, you see Doug trying to dry his hands off. They've had problems at, uh, early in the first uh, half fumbling the football. They've got Gordon Jones wide to the left, Carter in the slot, and then House off to the right side. Three wide receiver offense, one setback. The handoff is to the setback. Wilder and Wilder scores! does a good job here of giving the ball to James Wilder and they spread him out and they thought it was going to be a pass and he tried to get Pop James Wilder through very successfully right here. Wilder's a happy man. Great job by Wilder who runs very hard breaking several tackles along the way. Eight yards for the touchdown and the Buccaneers are back in it. Capice to try the extra point. Bad snap. Slider gets it down. The kick is up. And it is good. And we've got a four-point difference between these two clubs. 18-14. The score, Redskins lead it. We'll return to Tampa Stadium after this word from your local station. Dealers from coast to coast. Radio Shack. 
the computer experts with over 6,500 locations nationwide. And by Allstate. For home, auto, business, health, and life, you're in good hands with Allstate. Bill Capice is ready to kick off for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I said a four-point difference, five-point difference right now, 18 to 13. Redskins lead it. Nelms from the five-yard line back to the 15, 20, 25, 30, and dragged down finally at the 35-yard line. Cotney on the tackle as you look at the scoring drive of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Climax by the seven-yard touchdown run by Wilder. Well, you've been in this position defensively before, Joe. Your team scores after having a lot of frustration. The defense has held them. Does this give an extra added incentive to the defense? If no one is pulling harder for the offense than the defense. And what they feel is momentum happening now. They want to go in here and get that football, football back for the offense. First and ten. The crowd certainly has come alive for the first time today. Theisman back to throw. Protection is good. Gets it away. And hits a tight end, number 85, for short yardage on the play. That would be Don Warren. He is short of the first down at the 43-yard line. That's what the Redskins want to do. The longer Theismann holds the ball, then the deeper the drops the linebackers get, and it, it opens up that lane underneath the linebackers for that tight end or a back to come out and catch that short pass and hopefully run for the first down. Second and two. 13 minutes left to play in the game. 18 to 13. Redskins, who have not scored here in the second half. Riggins. For the first down, it's out to the 46, maybe the 47-yard line before running into the arms of the nose tackle, David Logan. Logan's another one of the pit guys. Next week, those of you watching, depending on what part of the country you're in, will see either the Redskins take on the St. Louis Cardinals or the Buccaneers battle Detroit. Detroit is uh, taking, taking it to the L.A. Uh, Rams right now. That'd be two wins in a row for the Lions. And, of course, uh, the Buccaneers don't want to wind up being down 0-2. It's Jeff Bostic, the Redskins center, who was shaken up on that last play. Now, they, if they lose him, they're going to miss him. They call him Poppin' Fresh. He's a... Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute now. Is that... That's like the mole, right? <laughs> wait a minute. Poppin' Fresh? Poppin' Fresh. I got that right now. He's a... Uh, well, it's kind of pudgy. I, I got you. I got you. <laughs> First down, Redskins at the 47-yard line. And speaking of the Lions and the Rams, look at what Detroit is doing to Los Angeles. I don't know what's happened to the Ram offense. You know, they were shut down in the second half against Green Bay last week and have not scored today against Detroit. One running back, that's Riggins. And Riggins gets the call and a stop at the line of scrimmage. Jeff Davis, number 58. Making the tackle for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Batman Woods making his presence felt. He's, uh, you know, the Bucks have a lot of uh, outstanding young linebackers, and Coach McKay said he's going to play them all. Ball is spotted at the 48-yard line of the Washington Redskins. They're looking at a second down, and well, not quite 10 for the first down. Call it nine and a half. in trouble behind the line. Stalls took a dive at him, didn't get him. He's at the 50-yard line and down to the 46. Short of the first down. You'll notice on the replay here that he stays in bounds. That surprises me, Joe. Well, he's trying to find someone open downfield. And when it, when it was too late for him to... To, to get out of bounds, they were there to make the tackle. He's trying to find someone open there. It was Leroy Selman who finally tripped him up, but not before he reached the 46-yard line of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Redskins are looking at a third and four. Art Monk in motion. Theismann with the handoff on the draw to Harmon, and Harmon slips through for what looks to be the first down at the 41-yard line. Booker Reese, number 66, making the stop. Big Booker is the number two draft pick 
who comes out of the ball game right now. In fact, the Buccaneers liked him so much that they traded their number one pick for next year to the Chicago Bears for an opportunity to select Reese on the second round. And McKay said he's a little disappointed so far. He's coming around rather slowly, but he still thinks he's going to be a fine player. First down, Redskins at the 41-yard line of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Redskins need a score now. Otis Wansley down to about the 40. I want you to see this hit that number 41 uh, Thomas made. A strong hit. He came up and supported really well. Norris Thomas, fine veteran back. Come on, fucker. This is what they had to do is come up and force the play. Hopefully turn it into where, where your players are, but he made a strong hit on a big back. We said this is the only all-imported secondary in the NFL. They've got Mike Washington, who played at Baltimore. Thomas played at Miami. Neil Colsey at Oakland. And then Cedric Brown, who started with Oakland. It's an excellent secondary for the Buccaneers. Second and nine. Redskins from the 40-yard line. Monk in motion. Theismann, you can hear him yelling pass all the way up here. Pass is complete. Very close to the first down. Number 86 is Didier, the fourth of the tight ends kept by the Redskins. And Cotney wraps him up. Clint Didier is a first-year man from Portland State. It's the way third downs have gone so far. The Buccaneers have the edge in that department. Third down play coming up, and the Bucks need a yard for the first down. Rather, the Redskins at this point need a yard for the first down at the Buccaneer 31. Number 44 is in the game. What do you think they're going to do with him? I don't know, Joe. You're the analyst. What are they going to do? They're going to run him. Let's see. You got it. That's a first down. That's almost automatic. <laughs> you can believe it. John Riggs is having a good day today. You think the odds were in your favor there? <laughs> I think the deck was stacked in my favor there. You can see a good surge by the offensive line here and a good block here by uh, Wansley, Curtis Wansley, number 39, making a strong block. Riggins now with 26 carries for 87 yards on a very warm, humid afternoon. He'll have dropped a few pounds before this day is out, as we'll have a lot of players. 18 to 13, Redskins leading. Eight minutes left to play in the game. First and ten. Redskins at the Tampa Bay 28. Didier in motion. Wansley trying to get outside. And knocked out of bounds at the 27. Not much there. Jeff Davis, number 58, again coming up to make the stop with an assist from Dana Napsiger. Both teams are playing quite a few substitutes, I'm sure, because of the intense heat and humidity. And that, uh, that is a factor. And, you know, we was talking to uh, Coach Henning yesterday, and he said that they were well prepared to, uh, to deal with the heat down here and, and the way that they shuttled, uh, shuttled their people in. They said it was dreadful last week in Philadelphia where the Redskins played. So warm weather is nothing new, although the Redskins don't normally work out in weather this warm. Second down, nine. Washington at the 27. Heisman with the sideline throw, and it's almost intercepted. The intended receiver, who was Alvin Garrett, number 89, fell down, and Norris Thomas thought he had one. This is what the defense has been playing for ever since this drive started, is to try to get the interception, try to get the turnover. There it is, and he drops it. Norris Thomas, number 41, drops the ball. And as you stated, Garrett fell down, which uh, caused that situation to happen. Well, Thomas got to be a little bit sick about that. Comes from a line of pretty good uh, defensive backs. His uncle was Jim Marcellus, who uh, for many years was one of the great defensive backs in the league with the Kansas City Chiefs. Big play for the Redskins now. Third and nine at the Tampa Bay 27. Theismann cranks it up deep in the end zone, and we get a penalty marker thrown as the ball went out of bounds. And again intended for Alvin Garrett. Thomas, by the way, we are told Norris Thomas is the only starter in the secondary for the Buccaneers who did not have an interception last year. Thomas is the guy that gave his bonus back after reporting to training camp for the Miami Dolphins. He wasn't uh, prepared for camp, and he decided that he left camp, and then he gave his bonus back. But then he came back, and I'm sure he got it back. <laughs> First thing he asked for. I'm sure. So a penalty yardage being walked off here against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as the Redskins get a mighty big break to keep this drive going. That was a third down play. Holding. 
Number 65, defense, automatic first down. And that's what kills you. The automatic first down for the Washington Redskins is David Stalls, the defensive end. Guilty of the holding penalty. Stalls was uh, one of the original uh, Dallas, or not one of the original Cowboys, but a member of the Cowboys before he was traded to Tampa Bay some three years ago. That's the penalty situation, pretty even. But the Redskins get the big break there. First down at the Tampa Bay 22-yard line. Otis Wansley is down to the 15. I tell you that uh, they have come into this game with the design of trying to cut back behind that great pursuit of the Buck defense. You saw he started out to his left real strong, and then the, the hole opened up over the center, and he cut back and almost broke it. Wansley, second-year man from Alcorn State, right now spelling. John Riggins, clock moving along with just over seven minutes left to play in the game. Redskins leading 18 to 13. They have a second and four from the 15-yard line of Tampa Bay. Wansley gets the call again, running hard, and is very close to the first down marker. In fact, if everything's in order here, could very well be a Tampa Bay first down just outside the 11-yard line. Washington with the number one offense in the league last week. You know, these guys are big up there, and they do a good job of blowing them out. They stretch that three-man front out, and they just get the mismatch with the guard on, mismatch with the, guard on, the, on the linebacker. Curtis Wansley did it. Otis Wansley rather does a good job of running. It is a first down with the nose of the ball just beyond the 10. So conceivably, the Redskins could pick up yet another first down inside the one. Wansley, the lone setback, did here in motion. Theismann gives to Wansley, and Wansley dives to the six-yard line. So pick up a four on that play. Jeff Davis, number 58, makes the stop. Davis, rookie from Clemson. Seeing a lot of action here in the second half for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Next up for Tampa Bay. Detroit next week up at the Silverdome. And the Redskins play the St. Louis Cardinals, who lost to the Cowboys today. Redskins are on a streak of short. That, of course, does not include preseason, which they just as soon forget about since they were 0-4. Second and six from the seventh. Wansley with a big hole drives to the goal line. Did he get over? Redskins are signaling touchdown. The officials say no. He was stopped inside the one-yard line. Cedric Brown saved the touchdown with the tackle. The offensive line is just move, making big holes in there, spreading that three-four out, and the Curtis Wan Otis Wansley just blows in through there to the big gap. He's going to have to change his name after <laughs> after you get through with him three times. <laughs> I'm sorry, Otis. That's okay. As long as Otis scores, you remember what it's like. Spell it right. That's all it that counts. <laughs> that was. Let's see if they did get the first down. I do not believe it. That third down. They've got inches for a first down and less than a yard for a touchdown. And Riggins is back in there and is stopped at the two. Oh, that's a big, big defensive play by Booker Reese, number 66, the rookie we were talking about. From Bethune, Cookman, a number two draft choice of the Buccaneers. As Riggins is stopped at the two-yard line, and I guess everybody in the ballpark knew he was going to get it. Booker Reese certainly knew, and he, uh, he submarine under, knifed through the blockers, and made the loss. Field goal try coming up. Of course, this would give the Redskins an eight-point cushion, which would mean it would take a touchdown and a field goal to catch him. 19 yards, chip shot. Perfect. Mark Mosley hits for the third time this afternoon, and the Redskins up their lead to eight with four minutes and 16. He's a member of the kickoff receiving team for the Bucs is Jeff Hayes. Gets ready to tow it. Redskins have an eight-point lead with 4.16 left to play. Morton is deep, so is Johnny Ray Smith. And it's lateral back to Morton at the 20-yard line. Good thinking there by Davis, the linebacker, number 58, who scooped it up, turned around, and lateral it back. Morton returns to about the 29-yard line. Well, although he's a rookie, he's not dumb. You know, he, he didn't want to get hit. He's very smart, huh? <laughs> so the Buccaneers will have a first down at the 29-yard line in their own end of the field. And they need to get something going here. They're trailing by eight, and the time obviously becoming a factor. 
Williams will crank it up. Goes with a short toss to Owens. Pass is incomplete. An excellent coverage by Rich Malott, number 57, who has had quite a game. I mean, he's... Uh, since he's come along, he's uh, filled in for guys like uh, Chris Hamburger and Brad Dusick, two legends among the linebackers of the Washington Redskins. As they retired, or rather, Hamburger went out, he filled a slot, and of course, Dusick is on the injured list this year. Tonight on CBS, 60 Minutes, the debut of Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, a brand new series, followed by Alice and Trapper John, MD. Stay with us on CBS. Brand new fall season. Going to be getting underway. Second and 10 from the 28. Williams, good protection, gets the pass away, completes it to House. House at the 40. House at the 30. Kevin House will score. Can you believe it? Everybody knew that he was going deep. Doug gets the ball in the, in the middle of the zone, in the scene, the zone, zone adjustment. Nobody got a jam on, on house, number 89. He does a good job right here of getting in the, getting in the field, out of running. Hold everything. Came back in. It was the first one to touch the ball. That is a foul. It carries Lawson down at the previous spot. They're calling the touchdown back. Oh, my goodness. Gordon McCarter, the referee, says bring it back. There is a penalty on the play. That covered 71 yards. House caught one earlier for 62 yards. And we'll get the walk-off and uh, hopefully get a full explanation of that uh, penalty as we go along here. Ball is at the 29-yard line. They are saying uh, that he's... Let's get it again. See if he gives it to us. Nope. What we hear is that he stepped out of bounds. There was no penalty involved. All right, we'll explain that to you after this play. Doug Williams. Back to throw it again and has his arm it as he delivers the football. The official said that House went out of bounds while running his pass pattern and then came back inbounds. And you can't do that. I'm glad you explained that to me, Frank. Did you know that? I knew that rule, but I didn't see him go out of bounds. Well, I didn't see it either, but we'll have a chance to look at it again. Maybe we can see him. Of course, he's back in bounds by now, I'm sure. And I was I was saying that he didn't get a jam, and evidently he got a real good jam from uh, Vernon Dean here, and he jammed so good, he jammed him out of bounds. So that was a good play by the rookie. Loss of down on the play as well, so that brings up fourth down. And a punting situation for Tampa Bay with three minutes and 47 seconds remaining. Of course, the touchdown and the extra point would have made this a 21-20 game. Nelms is deep at the 32-35. Back to the 40-yard line and up to the 42. The Redskins will put it in play from there, and the crowd really has quieted down. Obradovich making the stop off the specialty team of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Redskins by eight with three and a half minutes to go. Tampa Stadium, American League East final scores. Milwaukee putting it on the Yankees again. Baltimore stays hot on the heels of the Brewers and Boston beats Detroit. First and ten Redskins at the 42-yard line as the crowd really is quieted down. Hard-running John Riggins takes it out to the 48-yard line. Again, the rule book says on that long pass play, you cannot go down the sidelines, go out of bounds, and come back in. And apparently, House was bumped out of bounds, came back in bounds, and, of course, caught the pass for what looked to be an apparent touchdown. There is no penalty on the play, but it is loss of down. Frank, this is a time that can be very... Very critical for, for the Bucks defense. A play like that is, is kind of demoralizing. Time is out with three minutes and 16 seconds left to play. The Redskins will have a second to three when we come back to Tampa. Off with a second and three at their own 49-yard line and reliable John Riggins. The workhorse continues to get the call. He's very close to the first down at the 48-yard line of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Riggins now with 29 carries is two yards shy of his first 100-yard game of the season. 
Well, the Bucks are, they have their backs against their backs against the wall right now. They need a big play. They need a big play to get the ball back. Reckons with a very active afternoon, again proving that he's one of the best in the NFL. He came back a little bit slowly at the start last year after the year he sat out with a contract dispute and then really picked up steam in the second half of the season when the Redskins picked up steam. Great All-American at the University of Kansas. And timeout is being called by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with three minutes and seven seconds left to play. They stop the clock. They trail by eight. Begins with the football and a first down at the 47-yard line of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who have just one timeout left. With 3.07 left in the contest, Didier, number 86, tight end in motion. Riggins running straight up the middle. That'll put him over 100 rushing on the afternoon. And takes it down to the 43-yard line. Rams are coming back strong in the fourth period on Detroit. They have scored twice and narrowed it to 19-14. to And many of you watching today will see the Detroit Lions against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Others will see the St. Louis Cardinals against the Washington Redskins here on CBS. Redskins leading 21 to 13, trying to go 2-0. The way the season is going with all this strike business, who knows 2-0 may get you to the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Second and six. Riggins still on his feet to the 30, to the 25, and slides to a halt with the first down at the 22-yard line. And that probably will be curtains for the Buccaneers. This is the 18th 100-yard game for John Riggins. Very impressive statistic, Norris Thomas. Big John. Big John is bumping into the line, trying to find us some daylight. And then when he finds the daylight, he runs over a few tackles. Then he turns that speed on. For a big guy like this, he does a good job of running. Big John is going to be a little sore when he gets up tomorrow morning after the workout he's had today. Two-minute warning going to both benches. There's the situation with two minutes left to play in the game. The Redskins with a comfortable eight-point lead. Riggins with 31 carries and 121 yards rushing. And Washington with a first down at the Tampa Bay 25. And Riggins will just keep on doing what he does. I imagine he's one of the few people that was happy to see it rain. <laughs> I think you're right, Frank. Uh, it does favor a guy, a big guy like this, a power runner, when the field is uh, is uh, well wet and muddy. Uh, they can get they can get that good leverage and get underneath, kick their way, and get some good yardage, as evident for the yardage that he's has to, that he's uh, got today. Buccaneers have one timeout left, so they can stop the clock one time, and that'll be it. Second down and five for the Redskins with the nose of the ball just inside the 20. By the way, the Redskin record for carries in one game goes way back. Cliff Battles holds it, and it's 34. And for Riggins, that is now 33 carries. So Riggins needs to carry the ball one more time, and he would tie the Redskins' all-time record for most carries in a single game. The Redskins have done an outstanding job uh, these past two weeks against some very strong defensive football teams. And any time that you can move the football uh, against good uh, people like Tampa Bay and, and Everett right there, Riggins has had an outstanding day, rushed more than uh, the entire Tampa Bay football team. Now that graphic has him at 32 carries. We've got him at 33 for 129, and this would be 34. And that would take it down to the 10-yard line. So we'll uh, see if we can double-check that for you. If that is 34 carries, he just tied the record for the Redskins for most carries in one game. Tampa Bay still got that one timeout left. The executive producer, the NFL on CBS, Terry O'Neill, our senior producer, Charles H. Milton III. Our thanks to Eddie Gorey for all of his help. Our producer here at Tampa Bay and our director, our good friend, Bob Daly. The scoreboard indicates one timeout left for the Bucks, but if that's the case, they're not going to call it. Or that scoreboard could be wrong, and they could be out of time.